Hello, my name is Andrew Van Slars, and this is my second video about Riot.js. In this video, we will build on the basics we covered in the first video. If you're looking for an introduction, I would recommend you start there. We will cover how to use Riot's built-in mount event to run code as soon as the tag has been mounted, how to pass a function and an expression to give a tag access to code on our page, how to use Riot's built-in support for looping through data in a tag, custom events using the observable API provided by Riot. And finally, we'll combine these techniques to grab some JSON data, pass it into the tag, and display the data by looping through it. Like last time, I've created a directory for the files we'll work with in this video. I have a terminal window open, a basic HTML file, and Chrome open so we can look at the results as we make changes. To get started, we'll create the root level tag that these examples will all be based on, the contact list tag. We'll define this in a tag file. And we'll make the root of our file our tag. Then we'll give it some static content to start with so we can be sure everything is working as expected. We'll reference the tag in our HTML and add a call to riot.mount in our scripts tag. And we'll fire up our compiler using the watch option so it'll update our tags automatically as we make changes. And just like in the last video, we'll use the HTTP server node module to run our app. And now we can take a look at our page to make sure everything is working. And we'll see that our page loads up and our static content from our tag is displayed. When I'm creating a new tag, I always like to do a quick sanity check like this to make sure I haven't missed something basic. That way, if I make a mistake and my tag doesn't mount properly, at least I can eliminate the initial setup as the cause of my problem. Our tag file is set up and loading properly on the page, so it's time to take a look at the mount event. When we call riot.mount and riot finishes mounting the tag, the mount event is fired and our tag can respond to this with a handler. We'll add our handler code in the script for our tag. In this case, we're just going to log something out to the console so we can see that the event handler was fired. Let's switch to the browser, open the developer tools so we can see our console output. And when I refresh the page and check the console output, we'll see that the mount event handler code was executed. In the introductory video, we saw how we can pass data into our tags using expressions. We can also pass functions into our expressions, allowing us to give our tags callbacks. Let's go over how to do that. First, we'll define a function on our page. And I'm just going to call that function tag callback. And just like we did with the mount event, we're going to use our console.log just to see that it runs. To get this callback passed into our tag, we can pass it in just like any other argument. We'll call it callback, and we'll pass the name of our function. And now that that's being passed into our tag, we can call that function from within our tag. So for now, I'm just gonna add that right at the top of our script. And we called it callback in the object that we passed to the mount method. And we can refresh our browser. And we'll see that the callback was executed and then the mount event was fired. So we can see that it runs. Let's just recap what's happening. We have a tag, and our tag accepts a function as a property of its options object. In the page where we consume the tag, we've defined our own function, and that function can have any logic we need in it. We pass that function reference to the tag, and the tag can then run our custom logic through the function reference. In this example, we're just calling the callback immediately, but we can save that reference and use it as part of the logic in a buttons on click handler or some other event to pass control back to our application. Now we can make tags that stay focused on the view and can be reused more readily by providing custom logic where it makes sense. We'll revisit events and callbacks shortly, but for now, let's take a look at how we can loop through sets of data with Riot. To get started, we'll set up an object that has an array of objects as one of its properties.
Now let's pass this data to our tag in the mount method. We'll pass our peeps variable into a people property on the options object. Now that that data is being passed into our tag, let's look at how easy it is to loop through it using Riot's built-in each attribute. We'll display our contacts in an unordered list, so let's add that. For each person in our array, we're gonna to wanna to add a new list item to our list. We can do that easily using Riot's each attribute. The each attribute accepts an expression in the format of variable in collection. So in our case, it'll be p in ops.people. This will create a new instance of the li element for each item in our list. And then we can access the individual list item using the p variable that we declared in our each attribute. And with that code written, let's take a look at the result. So as we can see, looping is pretty simple in Riot. Now let's combine some of these concepts and make our tag a little bit more useful. We're gonna to need to make some changes. The first one is we're gonna take our callback and we're gonna move that into the mount event handler so that we know it doesn't get called until the mount event is fired off. We'll do a quick sanity check in the browser to make sure we didn't break anything. And we can see both items fire. And we'll also see that the order changed. Now that we know that works, we're gonna make some changes to our callback function so that it's a little more useful and it actually does something. For this, we're gonna grab some JSON data using an XML HTTP request. For the example, we're gonna use data in a JSON file in our directory structure, but this could easily be replaced with a call to a REST service or something a little more useful. So let's create our JSON data. I'm gonna go back to my HTML and I'm gonna grab this array of people. I'm going to add a new file. I'm going to call it people.json. And we'll just add that in there. And because it's a JSON file, I'm just going to wrap the property names and quotes as well. Now that we have that, let's add our XML HTTP request. So I'll create a variable called request. And that'll be a new XML HTTP request. And we're going to call request open method. And we're going to pass it get as our HTTP verb. And we're going to pass it a path to our file, which is called people.json. And we want this to be asynchronous. And now we'll add a handler for the request onload event. And here we'll just check the status of our request. And as long as we get a 200 response, we're good. And we'll know we have data. And we're gonna parse the JSON to grab the response text and put it into a variable called data. Okay, and we will come back to this in a moment where we have to get the data into the tag. And of course, in order to get any of this to work, we need to call request.send. So all of this is gonna happen inside of our callback, which is gonna be called from inside of our tag when the mount event fires. But we still have to deal with getting the data from the callback and the page back into the tag so that we can use the data and loop through it. Riot has a built-in observable API which makes it easy to trigger and respond to custom events. So we can leverage that to get data into our tag. In order to make sure we can trigger a custom event in our tag from our callback function, we're going to pass the tag instance to it as an argument when we call it. So back in our tags JavaScript, when we call our passed in callback function, we're gonna pass it a reference to this. And then back in our page, our callback, is going to accept the argument as a reference to the tag. Since our Riot tag is automatically observable, just having that reference to the tag is enough to allow us to call the trigger method that comes with Riot's observable API. Once our data is loaded, we're going to trigger a custom event in our tag and pass our data as an argument. So we'll call the tag dot trigger. And this event name is one we make up. 
So we can call our event whatever seems appropriate. And the second argument for trigger is the data we're going to pass in to our event. So I'm going to reference data.people. And people is coming from the name of the array in our JSON object. And now that we're triggering that event, we need to go into our tag and add a handler for it. We can add a handler to our custom event just like we did for the mount event. We'll start by calling this.on and then the name of our event, which we call data underscore loaded. And it's going to take a callback, which will accept the passed in data as an argument. And in the event handler, we're going to assign our passed in peeps value to our options.people. Our tag is still relying on the static data that we passed into riot.mount when we originally started this example. So let's go back to the HTML page and remove that so we can see if our new code is actually grabbing our JSON data and putting it into our tag. If we look in the browser again, we'll see that there are no people. That's because our tag file is responding to the events. It's firing the mount event. It's calling our callback. We can see from our console log that the callback is executing. Our data is being passed in, but we have one important update to make, and that is a call to this.update. This is what tells Riot to re-render and update the values in the tag. So when I refresh the page again, our tag will load. It'll call our callback. Callback will grab our JSON data. Once that's been done, it'll fire off our custom event. That will in turn call update. Update will re-render the tag and we'll see our content rendered to the page. Now, just to see how our tag would behave if our service that was providing our data took a moment to respond, let's add a set timeout around our XML HTTP request send method just to simulate that and see how our tag will behave. So this timeout will wait two seconds, then call the function, which will in turn call request.send, and that will simulate a slow loading time from our service and show you how the tag will behave. And we'll see that our static heading loads up, and then when that timeout is done, it finishes loading the JSON data and populates to the page. If we waited for our data to load into our page and then mounted the tag to, so that we could pass the data into the mount method, then the entire thing would have been delayed and we wouldn't have seen the contacts header show up first. In this case, maybe that's not a big deal, but if you have a tag that encapsulates a larger application, you're going to want these things to happen independently. Let's say, for example, we had a form that could add additional names and append them to the existing list. We could set this up so that the form is active and we can do things locally while it's going out to the service and grabbing the existing data for us and then it could merge those lists together when we get a response. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and please feel free to leave feedback.